Hello friends. So today we are dealing with spores. And you know what are spores? They are the highly resistant resting stage. Okay. And why they formed up? They are formed up due to depletion of nutrients. Okay. So need to remember in this the basic structure of a spore which you are seeing up here. So you are seeing up in the center there is a core. Okay. That is being surrounded by a plasma membrane. And then you have the cortex. And the cortex is also being surrounded by a coat which is having an inner coat and an outer coat. Okay, an outermost one is exosporia. Fine. So, again, if you want to revise other things, the core is there in the center, surrounded by a plasma membrane. Okay, then you have a cortex, then you have an inner spore coat and the outer spore coat, and the outermost is exosporia. Okay. So see up this particular cycle, how does the spore replicate and all that thing happens here. So you are seeing up in this a vegetative cell which is having the DNA. The DNA is being replicated, DNA replication happens here. Fine. So this divides up into two DNA molecules. Then a septum is formed up. Okay. And the septum grows and divides this into two comp like uh, compartments one is termed as four spore and one is termed as sporangium okay so there is a formation of sporangium and the four spores after that there is a formation of a double layered membrane which is enclosing up this four spore and in the very next one you are seeing up there is a sporangium with completely enclosed four spore fine then you remember the inner layer of this particular one becomes a spore membrane which is seeing up fine the outer layer becomes thickened up that is known as spore coat and obviously the cortex is the between the two layers that is what is termed as cortex and you can see up that this endospore is maturing inside the cell and whenever the conditions are conducive for it the free endospore is released and there is a germination of the endospore <coughs> And this particular one again changes to what? A vegetative cell. Fine. So if you revise up this thing again. So what is there? That is the vegetative cell having the DNA. It replicates up into two. Then there is a formation of the septum which divides this into two compartments. One is four spore and the sporangia. Okay. Then there is a formation of a double layered membrane which enclose up this four spore fully. And the sporangia with completely enclosed four spore is there. And then the mature endospores inside the cell that they are present up. Remember, the inner one, the inner layer is a spore membrane. The outer one is a spore cortex, which is a thickened one also. And in between them, you have a spore cortex. Okay. And you are seeing up in this picture what? The mature endospores inside the cell. Then this free endospore is released. And there is a germination of endospore wherever the conditions are conducive. And there is a formation of the vegetative cell. Okay. So I hope... I have made this topic somewhat easy for you. Okay, regarding the position of spores, you can see up these pictures. In the first one, you are seeing a central one. In the second one, you are seeing a terminal and round one. And in the third one, you are seeing a subterminal spores. Okay, the examples are these. Are the first one, the example is centrally located. That is in the bacillus series. And remember in the Clostridium bifermentans also. There is a central spores. Then you have the spore spherical that is terminally located, that is clostridium titani. And then you have the spores ovoid, they are subterminally located. Fine. And remember, most of the clostridium they have the subterminal spores. Fine. Then remember in gram stain, this particular fellow spores they remain unstained. Okay, you can stain them when modified ZN staining, they are somewhat acid fast. But they are using only 0.25 to 0.5% of H2SO4. And one method is there named as Koffer and Fulton method, which is not used as such. But yes, you can remember the name of this. It is being used for the spore staining. Fine. Then the usage of these spores and all. You know the usage of spores and all. The usage of spores is uh, there in this uh, sterilization control. That is uh, Bacillus sterothermophilus. We use for moist heat sterilization control in the autoclave. And the spores of uh, Bacillus subtilis we see up in hot air oven. Fine. Then guys, I need to tell you something about the L forms which always remain a confusion among the students. 
what are l forms the l forms they are cell wall deficient forms okay they are cell wall deficient forms and they were discovered uh, in the lister institute london that's why they are named as l forms and it was discovered by a fellow termed as clin berger she is a, she was a lady and uh, while studying the streptobacillus molliformis they have given this name and you know the streptobacillus molliformis uh, leads to a fever if if you remember that is haverhill fever okay so remember this there are two types of l forms you need to remember that is one of them is unstable l forms and one is stable l forms so unstable l forms are what they lose the cell wall in the presence of penicillin so first thing to be remembered is that these unstable l forms they lose up their cell wall in the presence of penicillin they lose up their cell wall but they are capable of growing up in spite of the <coughs> losing the cell wall they are capable of dividing but they can revert back to the original morphology once the penicillin is removed and that's why they are termed as what unstable l forms fine so in this you have two things one is protoplast and one is spheroplast protoplast they are gram positive bacteria p4 p you remember up whose cell wall is entirely removed spheroplast they are derived from the gram negative bacteria whose cell wall is partially removed okay so remember p4 p the spheroplast is obviously what gram negative so they are derived from gram negative bacteria whose cell wall is partially removed so another one is also there they are termed as stable l forms they are controversial group some say they do not <coughs> they should not be termed as stable l forms okay so stable means what they are unable to revert back to the original bacteria they are termed as stable l forms and mycoplasma you know they don't have a true cell wall the peptidoglycan layer is being replaced there by sterol only bacteria which have sterol or cholesterol in the cell membrane is mycoplasma you know that okay so that that's what uh, written in the last line that many researchers do not consider mycoplasma as l forms since they are not derived from the bacteria that normally have the cell wall so this question is being asked in the pgi chandigarh exam and they have asked all the following are l forms except so obviously mycoplasma is not a typical l form okay Thank you so much. So today we are uh, doing this much, and after that uh, we'll uh, start up with bacterial genetics. Okay, thank you.